Hi, everybody, and welcome to Top Coat 1.5 training. We are going to be talking about metals and anisotropic uh, layers here. So why don't we go and make ourselves a nice new material? I'm just going to make it chrome. So we got a nice new chrome material. Let's go ahead and apply it to our coffee pot. And it should be just nice and chromed out. Nice. So now we can go into our metals tab. And the, we've pulled out from reflectance all of our favorite and most distinct types of metal. So we can, uh, each type of metal has like a different index of refraction and different color fall offs. Now my go-tos are aluminum, copper, and gold. I use those most of the time. I love copper. Um, so copper just looks really nice. So you add in some default copper metal, looks great. We can click on gold. And instead of copper, it's now gold. Uh, we'll click on aluminum. So now we've got different index of refraction. We get some nice looking aluminum. We click on iron. And like slightly different look, but like a little, little bit more like iron. I'm going to go to copper and let's go to our modifiers and maybe add in a little bit of blur. Like actually works quite well where it's like, oh, it's still copper. It's just a blurry type of copper. We really crank it up. We add like almost maximum blur here and it still feels like copper. My light might be a little bit blown out here, but we still got this copper thing going on. So I'm going to pull back on that blur amount. Oh, so that's metals, uh, really straightforward. And it's really fun playing with those in combination with other things. Like I really like maybe making some copper and then adding in a little bit of blur and then going to my bump and then adding in these dents so it looks like it's hammered. Maybe go to the modifiers and we can make the dents not very deep. So we get like this subtle hammered in metal look. Uh, and I can go ahead and render that. Still a little bit of a blown out scene. Maybe I'll uh, change to a different... Uh, Different environment here. Well, that one's interesting. Uh, and you look at the changes changing the lighting did. Always keep that in mind. So we got this super blown out area over here, but this all looks great over here. So it all depends on the... I didn't even change the material at all. I just changed the lighting, and it completely changes the environment. Um, so, yeah, that's playing with different types of metal. Uh, and so that's, I guess, one of the most straightforward parts of Top Coat. Uh, but now we've got the anisotropic, uh, the anisotropy uh, tab here. I might even have a few more of these in by the time it launches, maybe. Um, but we've got a whole bunch of different uh, types of kind of metal scratches. And these are always created via like a sanding or grinding process on metal. And what's unique about these and what's really important to note is that projection matters when it comes to this stuff. So let's go ahead and grab a radial. And I'm just going to go and go ahead and make sure it's applied. So it's radial. Unfortunately, the preview window is rotated 90 degrees from what we'd want it to be. Um, so as I rotate, you can kind of see it's here. Um, and it's also standard renderer. There's no way of turning this physical, unfortunately. Uh, meanwhile, we are rendering physical here. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just apply that default and hit render and see what it looks like. And, I've, and I'm thinking it's going to look pretty weird. So that might be cool, but I don't think it's what I'm aiming for. We get that hard seam right here. It's kind of all super warped. Uh, so the point being is when you're using uh, anis anisotropic, uh, anisotropic, anis anisotropic, anisotropic, when you're using anisotropic, when you're using anisotropic materials, uh, you have to worry about your projection. So I'm going to click on our material here and go to flat projection. And I'm going to go to my texture tool and turn on axis because it's easier to rotate and move it. And... I want to maybe rotate this flat on the ground and then give it a render. So now I have determined its orientation. So now, look, we're getting, because I've done that, because I've determined my orientation is flat on the ground, we're getting all these really nice horizontal scratches. And if I were to view this thing from the bottom, you're going to see we get this really nice radial material radiating out, just like, you know, some sort of scratched pot or, you know, you know, anything that's kind of like the spun lathed metal. So the orientation matters. If I were to take this and rotate it to, you know, 90 degrees here and maybe pull it up a little, the bottom, I mean, this whole area, everything about it is going to look completely different. I think it's going to look a lot more like the original one, maybe at a slightly different scale. So we get that hard edge here and it's all stretching. It's going to be spherical. And at the bottom, look at these waves. Now that is the way it should look based on the projection we're feeding it. But we just have to make sure that we're doing it very intentionally. So we can click on our horizontal lines here. And so based on this projection, I think that should work all right. So we've got these horizontal lines projecting around. That seems to be working quite well. And now we can click on our vertical lines. 
And now we're going to get some vertical line projection. Now, uh, once again, and this is front, so we're going to get this kind of radial effect over here, but we get these nice vertical lines happening over on this spot. So the where it's applied, how it's applied, what the scale is when we apply it, if I scale that way down, then we're going to get nice, tinier, tighter lines. And if I scale it way up, then I think we're going to get bigger, fatter, subtler lines. Um, so the way those are applied is very important. Uh, there's a bunch of different types here. Uh, we've got our radial, two different kinds of radial, actually. And I've got my uh, circular, which is like you took a grinder and you pushed it down a whole bunch of different times. This might not be the best object to see it on, but we will be able to see it. But you're going to see we're going to get like a series of circles that are overlapping each other. Um, so they all get nice and circular there. we got this grid one, which is definitely the weirdest, but definitely looks really cool. Um, so we get like these little rectangular shapes and it's stretching across my surface here. Um, but yeah, it's really cool on the gridding there. And it's really like the light is hitting it and bouncing one direction and the light's hitting this and bouncing a different direction. That's what, uh, anastropic means is it changes the light of the direction. I'm sorry. It changes the direction of the light. So that, and now keep in mind that these, uh, all these scratches and everything can be put on top of the different types of metal. I can say, oh, these are scratches in copper. So now we've got copper on top of that. And I mean, even that, these, this has nothing to do with bumps. So I can go into my bump layer and say, okay, it's a little bit worn out. And uh, we're going to go into our blur. And we're also going to add in a bunch of smudges. So now we got smudges and anastropic stuff going on. And it's copper. And there's a bump. So all of those things, it might start getting a little overwhelming here, but all these things can combine to make, well, I mean, this is a pretty nice looking messed up type of metal. Like it was like, oh, it's a nice scratch to start out with. And then somebody beat, beat the heck out of it. And now it looks like this. So uh, those all can combine to make some really beautiful different types of metal uh, using the metals tab in the anastropic tab. So yeah, thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you guys in some more of them. Bye-bye.